This is the eMove Touring, and in this review, we're gonna go over why it is the most comfortable scooter for around $800. This is Chuck Temple with Electric Scooter Guide, the leading source of unbiased scooter reviews. We're one of the few channels that doesn't accept payments for our reviews, which keeps us honest. You can support our channel by subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, and if you buy using one of our purchase links, we'll receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. This comprehensive review will cover performance, portability, including a trunk test, ride quality, build quality, including our new drop test, safety features, customer service, overall pros and cons, and who should buy the scooter and who needs something else. Let's dig in. First, the basics. The scooter costs $899, but if you look in the video description, we have a 7% off discount code. The tested range is 22 miles. The tested top speed is 24 miles per hour. It has a motor power of 500 watt nominal, 750 watt max, and the scooter weighs 39 pounds. So for performance, the scooter is actually pretty fast. Now you can get this thing going to 24 miles an hour if you're on a slight downhill, although under normal riding conditions, you know, on flat ground, I got it to really about 21 and a half to 22 miles an hour at the top speed. What makes this scooter actually ultra comfortable is the deck size. And as you can see, you've got a lot of real estate here on the deck for your feet. So when you're riding at high speed and you're accelerating and you're braking and you wanna have control, a lot of scooters have a very limited amount of deck length. This deck length is about three or four inches longer than all the competitor scooters. And so you get a lot more comfortable ride because your feet just aren't squished together. Now braking is made possible by a rear drum brake. That brake has good activation and you can see you activate it through this left grip right here. Um, it has not only, of course, the drum, but it also has an electronic brake that's attached as well. Typically when I'm riding, I actually kind of like to just barely squeeze the handle, which activates the e-brake without actually using the mechanical drum brake, thereby kind of just saving me maintenance time because the more you use everything, right, the quicker it wears out. Now, I'll also say that uh, adjusting this drum brake is actually really easy. You, you don't even really need a tool. So when I got it out of the box, it was a little bit loose. And then to adjust it, you actually just twist this thing and that'll actually tighten the brake or loosen the brake for you. So I did, uh, you know, 10 seconds to tighten it up a little bit. And so I tighten it just to the point where it locks out a little quicker for me when I'm, you know, when I'm squeezing on the brake. Uh, that got my braking distance down to 16.6 feet, which anything under 20 feet is pretty respectable for electric scooters. Now it's not quite as fast as the Turbo Wheel Swift because that scooter has dual drum brakes, but the Horizon and the Ninebot Max have just one brake and it stops faster than both of those. Now acceleration is nothing to write home about, but it is actually faster than the competitor scooters. It goes to 15 miles an hour in just 4.5 seconds. It is faster than the other comparison scooters. So as you can see, when you're squeezing the trigger, it's actually a, a very quiet motor compared to most other scooters. I think the Ninebot Max is also really quiet. It's definitely quieter than the Turbo Wheel Swift or the Fluid Free Ride Horizon. Also, the activation of the throttle, as you can see here, you can just kind of barely pull it and you can see the miles kind of go up in a very linear fashion. So, you know, you have almost infinite levels of acceleration as you get as you pull down harder. Now for hill climbing, this scooter actually did quite a bit better than most of the competitor scooters, getting up our 200 foot 10% average grade hill in just over 13 seconds. So now the scooter has a claimed range of 25 miles. However, when we tested it, we got very close to that with 22 miles. Now that is a little further than the Turbo Wheel Swift, but not quite as far as the Horizon or the Ninebot Max. Now, if you want to look at all the stats we just covered, acceleration, braking, hill climb, all that stuff, and compare it to all the other scooters that we've ever tested, check the link above for our comparison page on our website. Speaking of acceleration, what's nice about this scooter is that you can adjust between a zero start and a kick to start. So kick to start is you kind of have to kick it to get it going like the Ninebot Max, and then you can hit the gas. This scooter, you can actually get it going right, right away just by pushing the, the trigger on it. So 
be careful if you're in that mode. Okay, so this scooter is actually quite portable. It only weighs 39 pounds, which is in line with the other scooters that we're comparing against at, in that you know $800 price category. But what's nice is that unlike some of them, like the Ninebot Max, you do have foldable handlebars. So, you know, you pull these handlebars down like so, then you've got a collapsing stem, and you do have this pin right here that helps it kind of stay in place. So even if this kind of gets undone, which it to me, this actually works pretty well, but if this, you forget to lock it, you know, you've got the secondary lock right here that helps keep it in place. This goes down, then you've got a lever here. You can hit it with your foot. You can pull that one down, right? Collapse this, right? Handlebars get collapsed down there. And then when you put it down, you'll see that the uh, stem also locks in place. I don't know if you heard that click, so that you can then pick it up. And at 39 pounds, it's actually not bad. You know, I don't, I mean, any, for me, anything under 45 pounds, I don't really mind carrying this up and down stairs. You know, this is a scooter that I would own myself. So when you're going to start riding again and you're unfolding the scooter, the one thing you need to make sure of, and this goes for any similarly designed scooter, and that is that bolt needs to be really well locked in place. So if you watch that bolt as it comes up, right, you need to go even further until, you hear that? Hear the click and that bolt will get fully covered and that's when you need to ride if you don't and that that bolt is not fully covered then you risk the stem collapsing um, which you know would not be good so just make sure that you give it a little push you hear the click it locks in place then you're good to go when you have the scooter folded the dimensions are actually really small 44 inches long by 7 inches wide by 10 inches tall so it's it's quite a compact scooter and can fit easily in most trunks so ride quality is really as good as it gets at around that $800 price range the reason for that is the upgraded suspension and the long deck length so first of all you have a different suspension this scooter is actually an upgraded speedway mini 4 pro but if you notice the mini 4 pro does not have this dual spring suspension in the front the mini 4 pro only has suspension right here uh, in the stem and so with the front suspension you get a nice ride you also have rear spring suspension that's located under the deck the tires are a little small, but they're okay. The front tire is an eight inch pneumatic. The rear tire is an eight inch solid. So you do get damping from the front tire. You don't get damping from the rear tire, but the suspension is actually really good. And so your overall ride is actually quite nice, especially over rough terrain. You'll notice it feels somewhat smoother than other scooters over that rough terrain. But then the other part of this thing is that it has a longer deck than almost any other scooter that we ride. Uh, it's a super extended deck and not only do you have this much room you can put both feet usually without having to you know so you can you can see how much room you got there um, also your back foot can come slightly off the back so we measured this at nearly two feet long of deck length but you actually get an extra inch or two because there's nothing to block you now talking about the tires right the front is a pneumatic tire, the rear is a solid tire, and that's a mixed style, right? Not a lot of scooters have this kind of mixed style. The reason for that is that the rear tire, 90% of your flats happen on that rear tire. So by making that solid, you're not gonna get a flat. The front tire is pneumatic, and so that will give you better traction for performance, safety, and comfort. Now, if you're riding in super wet conditions, just be careful locking out the brake because that will lock out the rear tire and that solid tire will tend to slide out on you if you're, you know, if you're braking very hard. So now there's a couple other little quirks that make the ride quality really nice. It's just little things that kind of all add up to make this a pretty nice package. Uh, when you turn this scooter on, unlike some other scooters where you have to click it back into mode three, this one will save whatever mode you are in when you turned it off, which is a nice little touch. Also, when you're riding, you can just barely press Press on the brake, which you'll feel that e-brake kind of kick in. You do have adjustments uh, in the P setting, so if you want to increase or decrease the strength of that e-brake, you can. But when I'm riding, I actually basically 95% of the time only use the e-brake, which just saves the brakes a little bit. Also, unlike a lot of the Titan T8 variants, you do have a bell on the scooter, which is located right by your brake hand. And so I'll pull it for you so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. 
So a lot of scooters either don't have any audible device or on your monster scooters, they'll take a motorcycle horn. And so when you're riding on a bike path near pedestrians or other bikes or scooters, you scare them if you have a too loud of a horn. This one here, this bell, is actually perfect for when you're riding near pedestrians because it's not alarming and they just look at you and they see you go by and everybody's happy. You're not scaring the crap out of them, basically. But if you're riding in the street next to cars, then what I'd recommend is getting uh, an electronic horn that you can just mount to your handlebars and that will actually be somewhat loud enough that a lot of cars will hear you. You can see the link for that in the video description. Another awesome upgrade on this scooter versus the Speedway Mini 4 Pro is that you've got a lot of deck clearance here. We actually measured this at just over five inches of clearance, which is really nice when you're going over speed bumps and off curbs and things like that. You're not gonna scrape the bottom. So the scooter has cruise control and it is on by default. We recommend turning that off at the beginning until you get used to the scooter. You can find a link to the P settings in the written review, which is located in the video description. Now, the cruise control is awesome once you learn how to use it. However, there is no audible warning to let you know that you're in cruise control. Okay, now for build quality. Overall, build quality is really good. There's only a couple little things about the scooter that we didn't like. Uh, first, the handlebars are actually really solid. We did have to adjust the leftmost handlebar, but you can see here that there is this little um, screw that you can use to adjust how tight or wobbly that handlebar is. So now you can see this handlebar is solid. There's really no movement to it at all. The grips do rotate a little bit, as you can see. You know, you can rotate them, so we'd like that to be a little tighter, but they're not super loose, but you can rotate them if you if you wanted to. We're not really getting any stem wobble at all, which we really like. So the cable routing is also really good. You've got protection here. We, we always like to have protection. As you move down, you can see that the cables are routed through the stem of the scooter, which is nice. Come out here, you've got a nice wrap, and then again, all wrapping and tie-offs all the way down till everything goes into the deck. And then, as you can see, there's a rubber stopper that will help keep water from entering the scooter. Moving down the deck, the cables come back out over here and then go straight to the drum brake. So there's no crimping or twisting of that, uh, of this cable, which is really good. So that's why the brakes actually feel really nice to use. Another testament to the build quality is the rider weight. And so this scooter has a claimed rider weight of 308 pounds or about 140 kilograms. The Speedway Mini 4 Pro version of the scooter has about a 265 pound max rider weight. So both of those are really good, but the suspension is upgraded on this scooter. So that, that increase of max rider weight is pretty legitimate. Another thing we like is that the charging port is located here on the side of the scooter rather than the front. So the turbo wheel slip and the Fluid Free Ride Horizon, the charging port is actually located right next to the front tire, which means that when you're charging it, if that front wheel goes to the side at all, you risk bending that charging port and damaging the scooter. So that's a nice touch. Now, a couple of things we didn't like about the build quality. Number one was the handlebars are easy to be askew if you don't spend some time getting them kind of lined up. So when you're first going from folded to unfolded with the scooter, you need to actually kind of line up the handlebars and then lock it down. If you don't do that, it kind of defaults to a slightly askew position, which just most, a lot of people won't notice, but totally bugs me. The second thing is that the kickstand started kind of rattling around and then eventually came loose and we lost one of the screws on it. So right now we don't have a kickstand, but those are the two build quality issues that we would like to see improved. So there are front and rear lights on this scooter, but they're both low. They're activated with this button on the deck. So you do have to get down to, to touch it, right? And then turn it on and you'll get two button front lights and two rear button lights. The very rear little red thing here is actually just a reflector. It doesn't actually light up. Because those lights are so low and they're not very bright, we always recommend getting a handlebar mounted front light. As you can see here, this is the unit and you just simply slip it on like that. It clicks into place. You can twist it left and right 
It's super bright, 750 lumens, and it's rechargeable and waterproof, so it's it's a it's an awesome light. In addition, because all scooters have low mounted rear lights, we always recommend having a high mounted rear red light, something that you can mount on the back of your helmet or your backpack. See the link in the video description for our favorite one. So the eMove Touring is sold through Voro Motors. They do have a few different places around the United States that are dealers for them so you can kind of test drive it and you can look at the link in the video description if you want to find some place that's local to you. The scooter comes with a six month warranty which is about average. Now for post purchase support, Voro Motors is one of the best. We conducted an anonymous email test a few months back to see how quickly they got back to their customers and they responded in less than 10 minutes, which is actually one of the fastest response times that we've ever recorded. Also, most of the reports we hear about their customer service are generally very positive. Okay, pros. This is the most comfortable scooter at $800, period. It also has the fastest acceleration and hill climbing time in the price category. The scooter overall is very compact and it's a Speedway Mini 4 Pro with a lot of upgrades, which means it's a very refined scooter. They've nailed a lot of those small but important details. Voro Motors is also a US based brand and they'll take care of you. Now there's also a couple cons to the scooter. Number one, the kickstand has some issues and may fall out. You'll need to make sure that that's tightened when you get it. A small detail that we would have liked to see is if the cruise control would beep at you when it engages. The solid rear tire can get slippery on you in wet conditions, especially if you really smash down on the brake. Finally, the last con is just that the lights are not mounted high. The, the rear light, no scooter is mounted high, but the front light is mounted extremely low. And so you do need to get a handlebar mounted front light if you're gonna ride at night. This scooter is for anyone looking to buy a scooter in the $800 price category. It's also for somebody that isn't looking for the fastest scooter. For that, you'll probably need to go up to the Wide Wheel Pro and that's a little over $1,000. But this is a great value for somebody that just needs to go from point A to point B in a comfortable way that's not gonna jar your body. This is for someone who wants pretty good overall performance in a safe and compact frame. This scooter is not for somebody that wants to go super fast, someone that wants to go over about 22 miles per hour. For that, you'll need to find a scooter with dual motor configuration. It's really not for someone that weighs over 250 or so pounds because you'll probably need more power. And this is really not for somebody that wants to do a ton of off-roading. While this will go over bumps and dirt and stuff like that, the tires are not wide, they're not knobby. For something like that, you need to move up to like a Kiwa Q Power or a similar off-road scooter. For more details about the eMove Touring, see the link in the video description for a written review. If you're interested in this scooter, see the link in the video description for a purchase link and a coupon code to save you some serious money. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our channel and giving this video a thumbs up so you can catch all of our content. This has been the review of the eMove Touring. I'm Chuck Temple. Ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet. If you're looking for an ultra reliable and a little bit less expensive scooter, check out our recent review of the Ninebot Max. And if you want the next level up with dual brakes, lights at night, and a little bit more motor power, check out one of my favorite scooters, the Zero Nine.